babe, you got me. <laughs> All right. I just never know <laughs> when to exactly start. So let's see. Hello. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is going to be doing an amazing cooking demo just in time for the fall. Today is Halloween, by the way. Happy Halloween. I almost wore my Scooby-Doo costume, and it's so funny because what I'm wearing almost exactly mirrors what the guest is wearing, and it's no coincidence because she bought me this lovely shirt because she really has a sense of style, not only with clothing, but with her food because her food is as beautiful as it is delicious and nutritious as is she. Her name is Elspeth Feldman. She's also known as the Speedy Vegan. And she also has this wonderful company now called Vegan News Daily, where you can get the recipes. We'll tell you how. And she's going to be making a spooky sweet potato soup. And as well as that, she is going to make a stuffed and trust, a new word to me, delicata squash. Please welcome Elspeth. So good to see you. Thank you, Chef AJ, and happy Halloween, everyone. It's really fun to be back here on your show, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, happy Halloween. I didn't quite get my Halloween costume together, but I thought black's a nice uh, coverall, so kind of fun that we're both wearing black today. <laughs> I agree. So you, you have such beautiful recipes. How do you do it? Uh... Well, it's kind of like the Beatles, you know, I lie in bed at night and wake up the next morning like and write yesterday, you know, that song they, they came to him in the middle of the night, but I, um, I don't know, you know, like I'll come up with ideas, sometimes it does happen in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh, I've got to go and, and try that out, or I'll think it's a brand new idea, and then I log on, and I see that um, 70 other bloggers have already done that, I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't original, so... Um, you know, sometimes they're completely original and other times um, they're just improved on whatever somebody else has done. But I, I usually make, you know, fairly simple recipes and then I like to just take it up a notch, you know, just do some funny little decor or, you know, add something to it. So it's, it's kind of fun. But I've written a lot of recipes over the last six months and um, not stopping now. But um, yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, you also your food is so pretty, too. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, my, my mom was always one to garnish, and so I guess as a little girl I grew up thinking like everything had to have a garnish, so um, I just kind of, um, I don't know, I like to make things pretty, what can I say? <laughs> so um, I'm just going to get started on the first recipe, so the first one is going to be a spooky sweet potato soup, no, a spooky purple sweet potato soup with cauliflower cream, and um, you just turn on the the stove top here and get some onions going. So I've got some onions diced up and I'm gonna pop into this pot here. And I'm just gonna let them saute for about four or five minutes. So I just wanted to get those on whilst we chitter chatter. Um, um, yeah, so my mom loved to cook. And in fact, you know, I grew up on a farm in Zimbabwe, um, which was formerly known as Rhodesia. So back then when I was born in 1966, it was Rhodesia. Um, but anyway, I was a dairy farmer's daughter and my mom, um, farmer's wife, um, used to get these cordon bleu cookery um, magazines, I guess, that came once a week. Her father um, had bought her a subscription to this. So the magazines used to come, not once a week, I think it was like once a month. And I used to just like tear into these things as a little girl, like looking at all these pictures and stuff. So, um, so I, I grew up like loving the looks of food and, and cooking and stuff. In fact, I still have all of those, those um, put them below books upstairs and you know I should really look through them because it's probably still good ideas even though they're definitely not vegan um but there could be some fun ideas back from you know the 1960s and 70s so um yeah so cooking's always been part of my um background my interest and um in fact as a teen I know I've told the story before but as a teenager I um I have a little black book which I still have here and I used to carry that around with me and um, write down recipes. Like if I went to a friend's house, I'd ask their mother, you know, if I liked the recipe, if I could write down the, you know, the recipe in my book. So I have a book full of my friends, parents' um, recipes that I um, have, you know, carried around with me over the years. Every time I went for a sleepover or anything like that, I had them. So it's kind of fun to pull those recipes out now and, um, you know, remake them to veganize them. Um, and um, also entertaining was a big part of the culture that I grew up with. Uh, my parents entertained a lot. It was, you know, there was no TV, no, um, no, in fact, you know, we were on a farm, so we were far from anyone else. So people came, they would come for the day, play tennis and, 
you know, eat, um, you know, delicious meals and, um, yeah, and it was also a, you know, a war situation um, in Rhodesia, as it was known back then. So um, people would come sometimes and, you know, we had curfews and things, so people would come and then they'd stay overnight, so they'd be there for breakfast. So I was used to having lots of people in my house and lots of, um, lots of food preparation going on. So that was kind of my start in cooking. And then, um, you know, as, as a mom, I love throwing birthday parties for my kids. I would go all out and do everything really elaborate. And um, that was just kind of my, my fun thing. Um, and then, you know, as I became vegan, um, actually before I went vegan, I, I did go to culinary school just for some basic classes. I think I did like two semesters of classes, just the basics, you know, some nice skills, some soups and, and stocks and things like that. And then everything just was, um, you know, even before I was vegan, I didn't really love all the rich foods and stuff. So. I did eat healthy, but I um, I just decided that I didn't want to continue on that route. And then soon after that, I became vegan. Um, so everything, and then I met you, and then it was like really um, squeaky clean, whole food, plant-based vegan. Yeah, it's amazing though, even though you cook the way I eat, it's still tasty and delicious and beautiful. You mentioned the country used to be called Rhodesia. Is that where they got the dog Rhodesian Ridgeback? Actually, no, no. Um, there were a lot of Rhodesian Ridgebacks there, but no, it, it had nothing to do with the name of the Rhodesian Ridgebacks. But gosh, those are beautiful dogs, aren't they? I love them. I love that little stripe on their back that goes the other way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ridgeback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have the onions going here, and just like Chef AJ, I never use oil. Um, when I cook, I always, you know, have, I actually put water in a nice little fancy bottle so I can add a little splash of water if the onions start to stick. Um, so I always have that on the side of the stove. Um, and then to this, I'm going to add um, some garlic and let that saute a little bit. And I also have some cauliflower florets. So just some cauliflower florets. In fact, that was uh, frozen cauliflower that I just defrosted. Um, and I'm just going to let that go a little bit. And then, of course, the star of this dish are the uh, purple sweet potatoes. Somewhere here, I have some purple sweet potatoes. Here, right in front of me. So this is what they, um, I'm using the Stokes purple sweet potatoes. And these are um, absolutely fabulous. When you cut them open, they are bright purple. So there's two types of um, purple sweet potatoes the Okinawan and the um, Stokes. So these guys are Stokes and that's what they look like on the inside. So pretty. Um, Dr. Greger definitely approves of these ones. They have um, um, athocyanin, which is a flavonoid, um, uh, which has you know, antioxidants. So uh, the athocyanin gives the potato its color, just like you know, strawberries also have it and beets and um, cherries and things like that. So um, these are going in. And I know that the artist formerly known as Prince was a big fan of purple, but I also know he's not the only fan of purple out there, right, Chef AJ? I, well, it's my favorite cover, but not necessarily my favorite color to wear, but I do love it. Yeah. I'm told uh, pink seems to be the color that I get the biggest response to when I, because all those nice shirts you're seeing, guys, they came from Elspeth. She, I wish you were my permanent dresser. Like, you know, remember uh, like in uh, Downton Abbey, how like Anna dressed, dressed. Uh, oh, there you go. That would be a great job. I'll take that. Tell me when you're hiring. <laughs> and cook for me. too. And yes. And you'll cook, her? you'll cook for me too. Oh, super. Yeah, sure. Okay. Just, uh, just gonna learn your habits. So no quinoa for Charles. What else is there? No nut butters, no sugar, salt, oil. I can do it, sure, I'll take it. All right, so I've got the um, sweet potatoes going in. So these, I, I simply roasted. I popped these onto a baking sheet, a parchment line baking sheet, and put them in the oven and roasted them until they were soft on the inside. So um, I, I cooked them at 400. I seem to do a lot of things at 400 or you know, 375. Um, and the, the ones that I had cooked for about um, an hour, actually, until they were nice and soft on the inside. So I've got this, um, I've got this nice mush going on here in my pot. And to this, I'm going to add some water. Oh, oh, no, I need to put my flavorings in quickly. So I have some smoked paprika 
and thyme, a little bit of salt free seasoning. I use Benson's Table Tasty. Um, thanks, Jeff AJ, for introducing all of us to that, and some black pepper. So I'm putting those flavors in here, and I'm just going to let it cook for a minute before I add um, my water. You can use stock, you can use water. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use water because I feel like there's enough flavors going on there. So I'll add that to the pot and then I'm just going to uh, put the lid on and let this cook for a while um, so that this can all soften and that should be good. So let me put the lid on here and that'll heat up and we'll let that go. And then I'll show you, you know, next steps as we go. Um, so this spooky sweet potato, spooky purple sweet potato soup with cauliflower cream <laughs> recipe came about um, because it's part of our um, new cooking series. Um, I'm the culinary sort of director and inspirer at uh, Vegan News Daily, uh, which is a company um, that my daughter Kaylee, who's usually on the show with me today, she couldn't be here today, but um, Kaylee's usually here with me and um, she, uh, the two of us sort of come up with these great ideas for recipes and we've been having fabulous series all through COVID. We've done um, every kind of ethnic food you can imagine. And uh, we have a new class coming up starting on Thursday, November 5th. That's this week on Thursday. And it's called Pardon My Turkey. So Pardon My Turkey is a three-part series. And it is a Thanksgiving-themed class. So we have wonderful appetizers, sides and mains, desserts, and of course, Thanksgiving breakfast, because um, so often you have people staying over around Thanksgiving. So we have um, each of the three sessions has a different grouping of, of recipes. And um, you can join by going to vegannewsdaily.com slash Thanksgiving, and you can find out more information about there. Um, it is a three-part interactive series. So we have um, classes via Zoom once a week on um, each Thursday. So starting on the fifth and then the two following Thursdays, um, sort of about 90 minutes. Uh, sometimes I go a little over. Um, and we fly through all of these recipes. Um, sh I'll show you, you know, sort of tips and techniques and Kaylee gives all sorts of information. Um, and um, you can, you know, as I say, find out more at veganusdaily.com slash Thanksgiving. And all the classes are recorded. So if you can't make it live, you can always watch it, um, you know, later on or at your convenience. And they all, um, they're all, you know, Catalog there, you can you have access to these rest of these um, classes forever. So um, anyway, so that's one of the recipes that we came up with. But then when Chef AJ asked me to come on on Halloween, I thought, well, what am I going to do? It's a special day. I can't just do my regular um, you know recipes. So I've taken this purple sweet potato soup with cauliflower cream and um, butternut croutons, and I turned it into the spooky one for um, Halloween. So it's um, typically I serve this, actually you can go to my Instagram, which is, uh, you can go on Vegan News Daily, which is the Instagram um, handle that we both use, or my personal one, which is the Speedy Vegan. And you can see a picture of how the soup is gonna turn out. So it's lovely and purple. And I do a nice um, spider web out of some cauliflower cream. Um, and then I take it up a notch and, and make a spider out of olives and I turned it into a black widow spider because those are the spiders that terrified me the most when I was a little girl growing up on the farm. Um, so I gave it the little red dot, which is a marking that the black widow spider, highly poisonous spider has. So um, anyway, so that's, that's what we did with that. So, but typically for, Hall for um, Thanksgiving, I have the purple sweet potato soup and I do a nice cauliflower, you know, sort of swirl on it and use some, um, butternut croutons. So these are just butternuts um, cubed up and roasted. So I put butternut croutons and thyme. So anyway, so we're gonna make it, we're gonna stick with Halloween today. And um, let's see. Are you gonna teach us how to do the spider web? Are you gonna teach that garnishing <coughs> technique? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, you know, we'll see, I'm a little nervous here. We'll, you know, you gotta have a steady hand, but I'm gonna try and show you how to do that in a moment. So I'm just gonna get this, get this going here. And it'll boil up. So it'll take a little bit of time. So for the cauliflower cream, I have some cauliflower. This is just uh, cauliflower florets that I had steamed up. Um, and then all I do with that is I'm gonna reach out of the frame here, my blender. So 
So I've gone ahead and just steamed up cauliflower and I'm just gonna pop it into my small blender um, container here. Because I don't have that much cauliflower. And I'm gonna turn this into cauliflower cream. So I could put some garlic in here as well and I could also put some salt-free seasoning or things like that or I could just leave it plain. And you could also do this with a cashew cream if you wanted some nuts in it or you could do it with um, yogurt, you know, vegan yogurt and stuff as well. But we're just gonna keep this all veggie. So I'm just gonna blend this up for a minute. You know what, all the um, liquid evaporated from it. So I do need to give it a little bit of liquid. One second because it's not gonna blend without it. So I don't, I don't want the cauliflower cream to be too thin, otherwise it's just gonna you know, be really runny. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of liquid and hopefully that'll blend up for us. So um, what I do now is I'll take this cauliflower cream and pour it into a um, squeeze bottle. So this is just one of those little cheapo squeeze bottles. I always have these on hand. Um, and this is why I use the small container for this cauliflower because I don't have a lot of it and I don't want, I need enough to go into my squeeze bottle so that it's not, oops. I'm going to scoop it out of here. And again, this is just straight up cauliflower. It's amazing what you can do with cauliflower. I love using it for all kinds of dips and dressings and even desserts. It's so neutral. Yeah, it's so neutral. I know I love that. My One of my favorite memes is that, you know, if cauliflower can be a pizza, then you, my friend, can be anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So I just scoop all this cauliflower into a squeeze bottle. Got a little bit of a mess going on here, but that's all right. Um, and then I did go ahead and make some of this soup in advance. So I could show you my little spider web on that, or we could wait for this soup to cook on down. I mean, this is all, this typically cooks for a little bit longer, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and blend this up now just for interest sake. So what I do next is grab my immersion blender. So I have this immersion blender here and I'm just gonna immersion this. So when you use an immersion blender, especially this is hot now, so you gotta be very careful. Make sure you put your immersion blender all the way into the pot and then start blending. And this couldn't be any easier, really. Once you have the potato cooked, cauliflower cooks, it cooks down in no time. It's so tempting with an immersion blender to want to lift it up, but you know, I'll just get splattered with hot soup, just like that, whoops. All right, we have a little mess, no problem. Just gonna wipe that down. I always have a, um, a wet cloth on hand as well. So, all right, back to business here. I'm not gonna let it go this time.
like a witch with my cauldron, just, you know, stirring it around. Okay. I'm gonna move this off to the side. See if I can clean up my mess a little bit. Okay, and stuff happens in the kitchen. I'm always telling our um, cooking class members to just keep keep carrying on, keep calm, keep carrying on. All right, okay. So we got our little mess cleaned up as best we can. Um, so for this soup, I like to use um, black bowls. Of course, you can use white bowls or any other pretty bowls that you might have. And then I'm just gonna ladle out some of the soup and you can see it's lovely and purple. Um, put that in. So I did leave a few little chunks in here. My husband's not a fan of super smooth soups. He says it tastes like baby food if you do that. So I do leave some, some chunks in the soup, but um, if I were having it, I would like it all super smooth and creamy. Um, and the cauliflower really does give it some of the creaminess. So now we're going to do our spider web, but I'm just going to let this cool for a minute because I don't want the cauliflower to melt into it and show you how I'm going to get ready for doing the spider. So this is what I want the spider to end up looking like. So I have this gigantic spider. Um, Black widow spiders are not quite as big as this, but I feel like it looks really spooky and scary. I could also just take away these, these outer legs but then I just feel it looks like a bug. So the way I, I do it is, um, you know, so that, I mean, that's a fine spider like that. But I think by adding that extra little um, joint in his legs is gonna make it look a whole lot scarier. So what I would do is I would, I would spoon out a bunch of um, bowls of the soup um, and then I would make my little spider webs on top of them and then Maybe not every single one of them would have a spider on it, but um, one of them has to have a spider. So, okay, so here we go. Let's get going on this cauliflower cream. So I have, um, I cut a little bit bigger on the tip of this container. And then I just sort of put my finger on the top and make sure that I get all of the cauliflower cream at the end. And I'm gonna start by making um, two cir uh, three circles on the top of the soup. So I'm gonna just, whoops. And you just gotta sort of keep going. Um, this nib does look like it needs a snip. I'm gonna give it another little snip here. So obviously didn't blend the cauliflower all the way smooth. So there's a little bit of something jammed in there. So again, I'm gonna make sure all the cauliflower is pointed down and then I'm just gonna do a nice little circle on the top. And then I'm gonna do a second circle. And so you're just basically sort of making a target on top. And then I'm going to do my third circle. And I just keep on going. And no matter what happens, keep on going. If you mess up, the beauty of the soup is you can just stir that cauliflower cream back into the soup. It'll just lighten it a little bit, but you'll be able to keep going um, and start again. So then I take a, um, a chopstick and start on the, in, the um, inside and just pull out some stripes towards the outside. And this is going to give you that nice web effect. If I had kept the, um, the top of the, um, so there you go, you have the web. I, don't, I can't really tilt the soup too much because it's gonna end up pouring out. I don't know if you can see that, but that gives you the effect of it. And then I can very carefully come and place my um, spider. So I just have some black olives um, and these were just black olives from a can. They, they do have salt on them. So I went ahead and rinsed them. And then I'll take a little um, paring knife and just cut the 
I'll live in half and this is going to be my body and then I cut an, the other half in half again and that'll be my head so I'm going to have um, I know it's a little hard to see um, let's see if I can try and put it a little bit at an angle um, so you just choose wherever you're going to start with your spider pop down the body pop down the head and then slice up the olive, um, olives into strips and start working on the legs. And again, if you drop something just like I did right there, I could sink that piece of olive into the soup and um, keep moving. Or I could just, you know, try my best to revive it and try and get these legs going. So as we know, spiders have eight legs. So I would just keep going with the, um, the spider and um, have fun with them. So. I'm just going to keep going. I also have and it's some... just the coolest thing I've ever seen. And even kids would eat healthy if it looked like that, because it's so fun. Yeah, that's, you know, I always used to love doing, you know, as I say, kids parties and kids food and stuff. So um, I am like Heather Godwin. I like playing with my food. So um, I have a lot of recipes. In fact, in our um, Vegan News Daily Pardon My Turkey Thanksgiving class, that's, you know, starting on Thursday, um, I have a beautiful quiche. It's a pumpkin crusted quiche. And I have a nice little artistic topping on that one too. So it's kind of fun to, you know, come up with, you know, beautiful ways to present your food and just and keep it fun and interesting. I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Charmaine says, how do you peel the sweet potatoes? And Latif says, can we use any type of sweet potatoes? Oh yes, yeah, so you can use any type of sweet potato, but um, I decided to go with the purple one because it is kind of, I don't know if I can get that any closer, but you can see my spider is happening there. Um, I might try and do one more web. Um, yeah, so you can use the orange sweet potatoes, absolutely, if that's, you know, that's what you want. Um, I just thought the purple would be kind of a fun, you know, color. So if I were doing it, um, in fact, if I were doing it for Thanksgiving, which is the way I have the recipe written in my um, the book for the part of my turkey class, I would probably just do like some swirls, you know, so um, do, you know, just do a little swirl, any kind of swirl. Um, and then I could add a few of these uh, butternut croutons. So the butternut croutons could go on half of it. And then I'll do some sprigs of thyme. So, you know, just um, some fresh thyme. And then I'll show you what that looks like. So this would be a more of a um, sort of a thanksgiving -y presentation. You know, you have some of the, um, you know, um, butternut cubes contrasting with the purple. Um, and I suppose if you did like an orange soup, you could do potato cubes on top. Um, but then you'd have to do something else for your drizzle because the, um, the white might not show up as well. But anyway, yeah, you know, just that can, some sort of fun presentations of delicious food whole food, plant-based, SOS free. And um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if you can walk over to the counter and maybe get even yeah. closer to the camera because people are asking, how do you make the legs of the spider? Okay, so I'm going to come around. Here I come. Thank okay. you. And we can see your whole outfit maybe. Uh, you don't want to see my whole outfit. It's got, I've got uh, yoga pants and sneakers on underneath the counter. How about that? Can you see that spider? Yeah, what's, what's, what are the legs made of? Olives, olives, cut up olives. And then this was the Thanksgiving-y one. So That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so. People are commenting on how beautiful your pot is and wanting to know what kind it is. Oh, I am, oh my gosh, I am so, I am so in love with my pots. So this is a um, stove, stove, stove is how you pronounce it. S-T-A-U-B, it's a French, um, Cookware, kind of, I mean, most people know about Le Creuset, um, but this is a Staub, which I prefer. I've never, I mean, I like Le Creuset, but I'm definitely a Staub person. So it's, um, Staub is how you pronounce it, Staub like robe. Um, and I have, I'm gonna have to show you my absolute favorite pot. So um, this, is, this is what I cook my vegetables in every day. This is also a Staub, it's a four quart. This big guy is an eight quart. But what I love, he has this little pineapple knob um, and, you know, it's cast iron inside. Um, nothing, nothing seems to stick to it. Ever. 
and it's nice and heavy. I can cook with it on the stove and put it in the oven and then also show up at the table, you know, with this. So I love my kitchen stuff. And people are asking, what, what, how come you left Zimbabwe? So, um, um, as I said earlier, there was a, you know, sort of a war situation going on and um, my parents were farming. And when I was nine, my father um, dropped dead of a heart attack. So he was a avid squash player and he, um, he was playing squash actually. And he, you know, he was a super fit, healthy guy. Turns out that he most likely had the high LP little A gene, the widow maker gene, because I have been tested and I have that. Um, but anyway, so my father dropped dead of a heart attack um, at age 47, I was nine years old, and my mom had four kids, I'm the youngest of four, and she continued farming for um, a couple of years, but we were right, we, our farm was right on the Mozambique border and it was um, a pretty hairy area in terms of the, the war situation that was going on you know, with terrorists coming in from Mozambique and um, Zambia and stuff. So um, it wasn't safe. So the army basically said that, and at that stage, my siblings were at boarding school and I was home alone with my mother on the farm. So um, they said, you know, to move off the farm and stuff. So we moved to the city, um, Harare, which is the main city. And, um, you know, she got a job, our lives transformed. It was no longer a little farm world. And then she ended up getting married and um, moving to South Africa. And um, her husband was, you know, living in South Africa at the time. So, um, yeah, so we, um, you know, ended up living in South Africa and um, that's where I finished high school. So um, in a city called Durban, South Africa, which had a big Indian influence. So I grew up with a lot of Indian food there. Um, I just lived there for two years, but um, that's influenced actually, we just finished a series for our Vegan News Daily class called Fall in Love with Flavor. And it featured French food, Indian food and Thai food. And the Indian food um, influence was from my, my time living in Durban. But yeah, that was why I left. Um, Zimbabwe is a beautiful country. Um, I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. The people of Zimbabwe are fantastic. They're really going through a hard time, but um, it's, um, you know, it's, you know, it's a beautiful part of the world. So yeah, that was, um, that was why I left Zimbabwe. And then um, after finishing high school, I went uh, backpacking around the world. I was 18 years old and I left home with 200 pounds in my pocket. And um, I had a one year ticket to go traipsing around the world. So I uh, worked my way around the world. I lived in Scotland. I lived in, um, in England and, you know, I was a waitress and chambermaid in a little Scottish village called Ellipool, um at a guest house there. And then I went to Europe with a girlfriend of mine and we hitchhiked around. We picked grapes in Germany and then it started getting cold. And, you know, I'd never seen snow or anything like that. And it was getting too cold for us. It was November. So we hitchhiked all the way down through what was then Yugoslavia, all the way down to Greece. And uh, we lived on the island of Crete for that whole winter for about six months and picked oranges and picked olives and um, yeah, had fun like that. So that was my, my journey out of Africa. How did you end up being vegan? How did I end up being vegan? So, um, you know, of course, growing up on a dairy farm, I was um, eating lots of dairy and meat and cheese and eggs. So that was what I knew was healthy. Um, but, um, I have two children, my daughter Kaylee, which most of you are familiar with, um, and a son, Kyle. And when Kyle was 15, he randomly, you know, I was out to dinner with him, randomly said that he decided he was gonna be vegetarian. And I thought, well, okay, no problem. Cause I really thought it was just gonna last a week. You know, he was a, a bit of a jock. He was playing lacrosse and basketball and soccer. And, you know, he was, you know, you know, he wasn't a vegetarian kind of kid, you know, so, uh, you know, that was my perception. Um, but anyway, so I didn't worry about it. But then a year later, he was still vegetarian. And of course, I was, you know, like, this is crazy. You have to, have to um, you know, you have to figure out where you're going to get your protein from. And um, So anyway, so I sat him down and, and insisted that he eat chicken. And he kind of turned green and purple and he said, no way, I'm not doing it. I just absolutely refuse. So um, at that point, I decided to look into it a little bit further. And luckily, Forks Over Knives had come out right down. So um, my husband and I sat down and watched Forks Over Knives. And then we sort of looked at each other like, wow, he's really onto something. Um, let's investigate further. Let's at least try to be uh, vegetarian because vegan was too extreme for us. Uh, let's try to be vegetarian, um, you know, at least for 28 days. So 
we decided to do the experiment. And of course, within that first week, I'd done so much research and, you know, I suddenly, you know, thought of the animals and the planet and all the rest of it. And I was like, I can't believe that I've just had these, you know, blinders on my eyes all this time. And um, so I went vegan very quickly after that. I mean, I was sort of a people pleasing vegan. So I was vegan at home, but when I ate out at other people's houses, you know, I might've had a little bit of dairy here and there, but, you know, so I went vegan and then my husband took a little bit longer. Um, and then my son, Kyle, who was vegetarian, he, um, he switched over to vegan and my daughter, Kaylee, um, became vegan. So, you know, as a family, we all, um, vegan and that, you know, it was all started by my son's Kyle's announcement of being vegetarian. When do we get to meet Kyle? Everybody's asking. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe on Thanksgiving or something, you know, I think I'm going to be with you on Thanksgiving. So maybe, maybe on Thanksgiving, but yeah, he's a great guy. So, um, yeah, the whole family is vegan. Not the dog. Doesn't that make it easier? My, my dog isn't vegan either. Doesn't it make it easier when the whole family eats the same way? It sure does. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's so great. Yeah. Really good. And my husband is like, you know, um, he, you know, hung on to dairy a bit and then he read Finding Ultra, Rich Roll's book. And that kind of, you know, put him into the next phase of um, really tightening his, his um, knobs and like getting rid of all dairy and all eggs. And then um, he has been listening to Dr. Gregor's book, How Not to Die. I and mean, for years I've been telling him, you got to listen to Audible. You got to listen to books on Audible. And he was like, no, I like my commute to and from work, time to think. And I was like, no, you just got to do it. So finally, he started listening to Audible and then he's been listening to How Not to Die. And every day he comes home like, oh my gosh, could you get me some more kale? Could you, we need this, we need that. We, I need some more turmeric. I need black pepper to go with it. And, you know, he's like, he's suddenly like spousing all the stuff. I'm like, I've been trying to tell you this stuff for years. But, you know, sometimes doc, you know, other doctors have to tell him. Just like, you know, Dr. McDougall has been a big, um, you know, convert for a lot of men as well. So anyway, so my husband is... Uh, you know, every day getting better and his, his palate has adapted so much, you know, like last Thanksgiving, he literally loved the meal so much. He requested it at Christmas day. I'm my husband's Jewish. I'm not, but we celebrate all the holidays. And so at Christmas day, we had the same menu that we had for Thanksgiving. He loved it so much. So I started making some of those recipes for him recently. And he was like, Hmm, don't like it as much. You know, I'm like, wow, your palate has changed. You know, I just, I don't have to put, you know, salt and things for him as much. I don't have to, you know, he really has adapted. What is your Thanksgiving menu for your family this year? Um, well, you know, we have this, this Thanksgiving class, this pie in my turkey, so probably gonna have a whole lot of leftovers um, from that. But yeah, I, I think we've been having so much Thanksgiving food because I've been testing out recipes. Some of the, some of the recipes are from my original book, Pie in my turkey, but majority of the recipes are brand new or they're updated versions of recipes from that book. So the majority of recipes are new. So we've been having so much Thanksgiving food that I think by the time we get to Thanksgiving, we may just want big salads. <laughs> are, are, are people able to still get Pardon My Turkey? Is that still available? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pardon My Turkey, you can you can get that. It's an ebook. You can get that at my website, which is thespeedyvegan.com, um, or you can get it on Kindle um, on Amazon. So, yeah, I, the, the, the version, the PDF version from my website is, I think it's better. The graphics are better. So, um, you know, I get the same, same you know, it, it, it's, there's nothing beneficial in it for me, but um, just that that's where you get the book. So the book's there, but um, I really recommend everyone going to veganewsdaily.com slash Thanksgiving and looking into the class that we have coming up because those recipes are sort of my, pardon my turkey recipes, but upgraded. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm just going to move a couple of things out the way and set up for the next recipe, which is the delicata squash that's stuffed and trussed. So you want to chit chat or something about that? Sure. I just, I, I, guys, I was going to put Bailey in her costume, but she just doesn't like it. We were both going to wear costumes and uh, she has a hot dog costume, but she just doesn't like it. But she wants to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and to tell you that this is a day that a lot of people struggle with because they eat that one fun size Snickers bar and then we don't hear from them till January 2nd. So I'll let you know that the weight that people gain between Thanksgiving and New Year's is generally weight that is not easily taken off. So don't even worry about losing weight during the holiday period. Even if you maintain your weight, it is a win. So. That's why I promote something called 63 days of abstinence, where you actually, instead of loosening your belt, which you'll have to if you gain weight, 
I say tighten the screws during this very difficult. Well, it might not be as difficult this year with you know with the with the pandemic. Probably not as many people are traveling, not parties, but still, the amount of food and the type that's often around, you got to really be mindful. Now, thank you for saying you love my dog, Ruth. Oh, and Elspeth, uh, they want to know what age are your children? My children, here I come. My children, uh, my daughter is 27, she'll be 28 soon in December, and my son is uh, 25, be 26 on election day on Tuesday. So, Ooh, yeah. that'll yeah. be a memorable birthday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It sure will be, <laughs> but we won't go there. Um, anyway, um, so I'm ready to get going on the stuffed and trust delicata squash. Um, so for those of you who don't know what a delicata squash is, this is what it looks like. It is the most delicious squash, really, um, so good. So I highly recommend, whoops, whoops. my bone is a little funky right now. Um, so I highly recommend that you try it. It's uh, kind of cute. But anyway, so um, I didn't get to see Bailey all, um, on your lap, but you know we have a um, we have a German Shepherd do uh, dog called Prince, and he is he just turned four, but he's new to us this year. We got him; for, he was rescued, um, so he's our wonderful dog in our life. We've always had German Shepherds, but my husband, and then you know, sadly, we lost both both of ours over the last couple of years. And my husband was adamant that he wanted another purebred German Shepherd. And I said, there is no way we're getting a purebred anything. We are getting a rescue dog. We're going to be SPCA. We're going to do that. And then suddenly somebody tagged me in a post on Facebook, like, here's a rescue dog. You know, it looks just like your other dogs. You're interested? And I was like, oh, yes, <laughs> a rescue German Shepherd. So, yeah, so he's a beautiful guy. But um, I don't think he would be interested in dressing up at, for Thanksgiving at all. He's probably scary enough for some people. He's gorgeous, though. You, they probably like, there's tons of pictures on my Instagram of him. You have to go check him out. Yeah, so, I follow you on Instagram. I love your post. So I'm just going to cut this um, delicata squash in half. So just use a nice big chef's knife. Just pinch up on the blade. This is what I always tell our cooking class members. Pinch up on the blade. Um, don't be shy. And then um, I like to use a a grapefruit spoon here. So I'm just gonna scoop out all of the inside and where am I gonna put it? I'm just gonna put it right here on this tray. So this will go in my compost. Um, but while I'm doing that, I have my pan heated up again with nothing in it at all. And to this pan, I'm gonna add, um, this time I'm using red onions. Again, this has the um, atherocyanine, you know, that keep the, the flavonoids, the antioxidants that keep Dr. Gregor happy. So I've got um, red onion, I've got some mushroom, and to add a nice, and celery, got some celery diced up, and some apple. So this is just um, envy apples. I know who turned me on to envy apples, and thank you for that, Chef AJ. They are truly the most wonderful apples. So unpeeled but um, cored, I use this little corer, um, and then diced up. So put that in my pan and let that just sort of cook together for a little while. Um, and then I'll just continue um, scooping out all the seeds. So you can see I have a nice little boat happening here. Uh, I'm gonna keep going and get this guy out. So scoop it all out. So, so could you talk about what recipes you'll be teaching in the class and when and how long does it run for? Oh yeah, sure. So um, three, it's a three part series. I have appetizers, some of the appetizers. I always do a beautiful um, coup de thé of, of vegetables and stuff, you know, made like a turkey. Um, I have the most delicious artichoke and spinach dip. I've got a dip that I call, I swear it's not crab dip. That's um, really delicious. Um, and some pumpkin seed crackers. Um, I show people how to roast the uh, pumpkin seeds. And then we've got two soups. We have the purple sweet potato soup with the cauliflower cream and butternut croissants, uh, croissants rather, not croissants, croissants. Um, and then a chunky um, pumpkin corn chowder with shiitake bacon. And then for the main courses, I've got a, I'll, I'll show you. I have a whole, a whole stuffed pumpkin 
Um, so this is a pumpkin with um, a wild rice stuffing. I always do that. And then what else? I'm just going to run up again and grab something. Um, I have I have part of a um, uh, this is a a cauliflower rice casserole. I never thought I'd be making casserole, but that's fun. And these are um, chocolate pecan tarts. Those are also part of the dessert. And then um, I have some chunky pumpkin muffins. So these are the most delicious muffins. SOS free, um, and they're delicious. So um, I've got there's probably 40 recipes in this class. Um, my husband's horrified because he's always I'm always trying to do a thousand and one recipes in each class. Um, so he is adamant that we need to try and trim, trim the amount of recipes, but I can't help myself. So there's fabulous recipes. There's a uh, hassleback butternut squash. There's a cottage pie, a company cottage pie. With, um, if you just go to my Facebook page or to the veganusedaily.com slash Thanksgiving, you'll see a lot of the recipes there. Um, and they are fabulous and delicious. And you'll wow your family and wow your guests. So I'm going to quickly add some thyme and some poultry seasoning to this. You're going to deglaze it a little bit with some apple cider vinegar. So instead of using water, I love apple cider vinegar. It really is delicious. So that deglazes the pan a little bit. And then I'll quickly turn it off. And I'm going to add some walnuts. You don't have to add walnuts at all, but they add some nice um, omega threes and a nice little bit of crunchiness to this. So I'll add walnuts and my wild rice. So you could use um, quinoa, you could use oat roots, you could use regular rice. I happen to love wild rice. So I'm going to pop this in the, the pot here and just you know, again, the heat is off now. Oh, and I wanted to tell you that with the um, purple sweet potato soup, this is how I store the soup in jars in the refrigerator. So, you know, I can always just pull out a jar um, and heat it up. But so here I have this lovely stuffing here. And I have a funny story about apple cider vinegar. My father, who I told you had, you know, very suddenly died of a heart attack at age 47. He was really into like health and wellness and weightlifting and um, all sorts of different things well before his time. I mean, he was a farmer, but he was a bit of a Renaissance man. Um, and he was into all sorts of different things. So he had read all about apple cider vinegar. This was back in the, you know, 60s, 70s. And he, um, when his mother died, she lived in a city and she was a little granny, he lived in a granny flat and she had this little Pomeranian dog who was about 15 years old. So when his mother died, that dog came to live with us. And we had, you know, six big German Shepherd farm dogs and, um, this little old lady, 15 year old Pomeranian dog came to live with us and she was blind. She had cataracts all over her eyes. And um, she was the only dog that was inside the house, you know, because we had a beautiful climate. So our dogs were mostly outside the house. But this little dog came and my father started feeding her apple cider vinegar every day. And within about a month, those cataracts had receded completely from her eyes and she took on a new lease of life and she lived for another um, two and a half years. So that was Mitzi. So apple cider vinegar was the only thing that he changed about her diet. So that's incredible. Yeah. So anyway, so now I've got my stuffing. So what I do is I try and fit as much of this. Um, and this recipe is for a couple of, you know, delicata squash. I'm just doing one to show you. So I try and fit as much as I can into each side. And it's called stuffing because you really want to stuff it down. So that's what I'm doing. So I stuff it all in. It's so pretty and colorful. And yeah, I probably should have tasted it right about here and adjusted this, this evening, but I think you all know to do that. Um, I kind of know my recipes and my palate so well now that I, I kind of don't always remember to taste as I go. So I've got my two halves here. Two halves make a hole. And I just, oh, I usually do this over the pot. So if anything falls out, it's no big deal. And then I just, you know, marry it together and just squish it together like that, like a sandwich. And I'm going to place that on a parchment lined baking sheet. And then I'll just grab some um, kitchen twine. So just want to grab any old um, kitchen twine that you have. And I'll try and estimate how much string I need. And I'll show you how to truss it. So 
trusting is a, you know, a cooking term. Like usually you trust a chicken, you would tie back its wings and legs and whatever they do with it when they're cooking chicken. But this is, um, so that's where the term trust comes from. But I just tie a little tie around here. So you start off just at one end, just tie it tight. I'm trying to balance this thing because he's got a, a round bottom. And then, okay. I know there's a lot to see on the screen, isn't there? I'm going to move some of that out. So then what I do, so that's just around the, the end of the, whoops, you know what? This has come apart. I'm going to start again. A little further down. Tie it up. Okay. And then I just pull the string along the top and I put my finger down and I go around underneath and I'll thread the, the string through the top here. I feel like I'm doing macrame or something. Um, and then I, again, pull it along the top and go around and I tuck it in here. Okay, so I'm just tightening it, tightening it so it's gonna to stay together. And then I'll just lift it up and come all the way around underneath here and then meet up with that piece of string that we started off with um, dangling in the beginning. And I just sort of tie it up together. Doesn't have to be pretty. This is just gonna keep the, um, the delicata squash together. And it looks kind of fancy and your friends. Oh, think wow. Think oh, wow. So anyway, so that's how it looks, right? So then I'll just pop that on this baking sheet and put this in the oven. And I did go ahead and make one um, earlier. So I'd bake that. And again, if you want the recipes, go to veganusedaily.com slash recipes. So this is what it ends up um, coming out like. So this has been sitting there for a little bit longer. So you just want it to get nice and brown and soft. And the skin of the delicata squash is so um, tender um, that you're going to be able to just um, eat, eat that too. So I could either um, put this on a, a black platter or a white platter. But what I like to do is I cut off a little bit of the um, string that was tied up with. And then I think I'm going to use a serrated knife. And then I just, you know, sort of press gently down on it and I cut all the way through and get these little um, circles. So you end up with these nice little circles of the, um, the squash with the stuffing inside of it. So yeah, that one doesn't have a, a solid base. So the other ones will look better because they'll have a, a solid base. So you cut that in half. So I do about um, one or two inch thick slices of this. And of course, you always want to garnish. I was going to do a different recipe for um, today's class, but I thought these kind of look like eyeballs, so they would be fun for, um, for Thanksgiving. I mean, for, what are we at? Halloween. Um, and then I just take a couple of sprigs of rosemary um, or thyme or sage or whatever it is that um, you have. Um, don't have anything growing in my garden. And then what I could do next is um, put a drizzle of balsamic vinegar. So a good one for this dish would be Gilroy garlic from California balsamic, but you could use any one that you want. I happen to be a complete convert to California balsamic vinegars. Um, love, love your vinegars, Thomas. But um, anyway, so that would be a wonderful dish to serve. It's very festive, it looks very Thanksgiving-y, um, but you could also have it for Halloween or you could just have it in the middle of the week. Looks amazing. Yeah, so that's um, that's a nice, quick, easy recipe. You know, it doesn't. You know, again, it's just whole food, plant based. Um, it just, you know, we could we could eat everything just in you know single components, just a bowl of brown rice. But why not put it in something and you know turn it up a notch? <laughs> that's amazing, and you got it all done. So, what what dessert are you going to be making for Thanksgiving? Um, well, there's always going to be chocolate in my house. So this uh, chocolate pecan tart is always going to be a winner. Um, and this is, I, 
sometimes I'll just make the little tartlets. And actually this is pretty cool. What I do with these is I make the tartlets out of, um, you, you can use those fluted um, pie, pie, you know, pie dishes, or you could use um, mason jar lids. So this is what I use for this. So, you know, that just the regular mason jar lids. I press my crust into this and then I just pop it out. Like it's got a, you know, like one of those bottomless uh, pie charts, pie, pie dishes rather, tart dishes. And you can make all, you know, as you can see, they're just mason jars. So those are kind of fun. Um, I always do a fruit turkey and pumpkin pie. I have a unbelievable gluten-free vegan um, pumpkin pie that is so good. Um, and what else do we do? Is that in oh, pardon? Is that recipe in pardon my turkey? It's going to be in the class, yeah. And I, um, I also do, um, yeah. And I've been, I've been having so much fun using all sorts of different pumpkins this year. So instead of, I don't use pumpkin from a can. I usually cook the pumpkin myself. Um, so I'm, I've been making the pumpkin pie out of blue Hubbard squash, which are these great big blue squash. Um, we have a pumpkin farm pretty close to us, and they have all these fabulous pumpkins. So this is called a. I think this is a knucklehead. Um, and then there's this uh, futsu, which is a Japanese one. And it's so delicious, really delicious. Uh, I make a fabulous Thai pumpkin curry with that. And then, you know, I think most people are familiar with these peanut um, pumpkins, but so many fun pumpkins to try. Yes, you could definitely open a can and, and use that, but um, why not have fun and, and try some new ones? I highly recommend the Blue Hubbard. We're gonna go get some more of those maybe today. So we have a question, how, any tips on how to cut, cut squash open? I find some of them difficult to cut. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if you go to um, my, my Instagram page, The Speedy Vegan, um, there's a story in there. I cut, um, cut open this Hubbard squash. It was, it was a workout. I mean, I, was, <laughs> I had a very sharp, sharp knife. So if I were gonna attack this particular pumpkin, not attack, but you know what I mean. Um, I would just start, you know, with a pointed blade of my knife in and just really put a lot of hard pressure. You've got to start with a sharp knife, pinch up on the blade. Um, with the Blue Hubbard squash, I thought I was going to have to get a um, chainsaw or something. It was so hard, but it was so worth it. It was the flesh is just delicious. Um, serious, I would just, you know, slice it and then just go around and, and do big chunks of it or just, you know, cut it in half and then get it in the oven. Um, and then worry about scooping out the flesh later, you know, keep the skin on and stuff. So, you know what I've done? Sometimes I've microwaved them just for a few minutes just to get them a little bit softer and then cut them. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I know. And I have a really great, in, in part of my turkey class, I have a really eye catching hassleback butternut squash. And, and with that, I, I do peel it very easy. They peel so easily with, you know, vegetable peeler. And then I'll put it in the oven and then do the little slicing, um, you know, 20 minutes later and then, then cook it. Um, so yeah, so they're just fun ways to, to play with all these squash and it's just a fun time of year to use all these different ingredients and, um, find fun ways to do it. And I think, you know, with Thanksgiving, it's like, if you're going to make a statement about being vegan or whole food plant-based, um, you gotta like up the ante a little bit and make it look really beautiful and taste, um, as delicious as you can make it taste, um, while keeping it whole food plant-based. So, um, I always have. One, uh, there's one recipe in the book that's maybe a, a throwaway recipe. It's so good, everybody's eyes light up, but it does have some processed food and it's a, a ginger snap trifle and it does have coconut cream and things like that. So, you know, sometimes it's that one recipe that'll lure people in and make them um, a little bit curious. And then I have, you know, um, also as part of the class, we have fabulous breakfast and brunch ideas as well. So, you know, muffins and pumpkin spice waffles and granola and chia pudding and Oh my it's God, don't stop, and, stop. You're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah, I took one of your classes. I, I, they're, they're just amazing. And your food is so delicious. I had no idea you went to culinary school. What, where did you go and when did you go? Well, it was just in, um, it was about, I think it was about, gosh, maybe 2007 or something. Um, I, you know, I was just a busy mom and I, I really wanted to, you know, take these classes. And I uh, went to the local community college, Anne Arundel Community College. I live near Annapolis, Maryland, and they have a really good culinary school. And I was like a straight A serious student. And um, what I did was I did like the um, summer session. So it was instead of spacing it out over six months, I went every single day for three weeks. So every day I had to show up there with my apron all pressed and stuff and all my knife cuts done. So 
I'd come home and you know be chopping and slicing and dicing. It was kind of nice to do it in an express version, but it was um, um, it was tough. But anyway, I had fun, so I did that, and then I did their um, soups and stews, and I did all their you know food safety things and what have you. But I didn't I didn't continue with it um, because I felt like I got what I wanted, and I was never really going to go and be a chef. But um, who knew that you know who would turn into all of this? And I'm having so much fun. I never thought I would be <laughs> brave enough to come on your show or do any of these cooking classes that I do. But um, I really, you know, encourage anybody out there who's, you know, thinking about it or thinking about doing something, just go ahead and do it. You know, I think you sort of get to a certain age where you realize, you know, my mother died in, in March. And I think, and, and soon after that, my daughter asked me, you know, to start doing this with her. And I was like, you know what, you, you have one life, you know, when am I going to do it? You know? And, um, Someone had given me a really good piece of advice, like, you know, find out what your gifts are and share them with the world. So, um, you know, I could be cooking all this stuff in my kitchen forever, but, you know, why not share it with the world? And, sh and I'm surprised that people don't know how to do some of the stuff, you know, I'm like, oh, wow, is that impressive? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I thought it was, you know, so, you know, so I encourage you all, you know, if you have dreams or aspirations of doing something, just do it. I mean, you know, just do it. Well, my gift is finding treasures like you among the plant-based world and putting them on the show. And that's what I love doing because you are a gem and you're going to be on, we, they don't, people don't know this unless they're on my mailing list probably, but we're doing a special show on Thanksgiving day and where we're having multiple chefs do multiple recipes like you and Ramses Bravo and <clears throat> Tammy Kramer and Shada and Carolina. We're going to make an entire Thanksgiving dinner. I think you have dessert scheduled. I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be the dessert lady and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be fabulous. And, um, thank you for the, all these wonderful opportunities. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, yeah, you know, there's a few chefs like you and, and now James Seth that are just at the top of the cancellation list and we get a cancellation. You're who we call. I thank you so much for this beautiful presentation. I hope everyone will sign up for the class or at least sign up for the free recipes and that will make you want to take the class there. What, and, and they are recorded. So if somebody can't make it live, they can see it afterwards. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, you know, classes are, you know, 90 minutes or sometimes two hours, but um, yeah, they're all, they're all recorded. You can, you know, watch it forever. You get detailed recipe books, shopping lists, and a Facebook group, you know, a nice community of people who are just into sharing um, the, this food and what, you know, some people have ad adaptations that may, they make, you know, because of allergies and stuff. And it's just a nice supportive group and, you know, you'll learn a thing or two and you'll, um, you'll feel a little more confident in the kitchen. So we'd love to host you. That's great. Well, people keep asking me what I'm making for Thanksgiving, so I'll answer it. I'm doing all the recipes from my new book, Own Your Health. I'm doing the cranberry spritzer, the holiday nog, the holiday sweet potato stacks, the new relish, which is cranberry cherry peri, and I'm doing the holiday parfait. So I'm doing all recipes from my new book. I hope you guys will come back tomorrow when we have two more fabulous cooking demos. At 11 o'clock, we have a registered dietitian. Her name is Lily Coria. She is wonderful. And we have Gustavo Tolosa, who's going to be making food at two o'clock. But if you guys are old enough to remember a commercial when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Well, when Dr. McDougall emails, I get him on the show right away. So we're doing a bonus show at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow with none other than one of my true heroes, Dr. John McDougall. But please remember that we do turn the clocks back tonight. So if you don't do that, you're going to miss all the shows because you're going to be a bit late. Well, thanks again, Speedy Vegan. And it really was speedy because you really did a, like a gourmet meal very, very quickly. Oh, thank you, Chef AJ. Fun, really fun to be here. I'm looking forward to Dr. McDougall tomorrow, too. So thanks very much. Really great to have um, you all in my kitchen again. Yeah, and thank you for dressing me. You've really upped my game. <laughs> I love it. You know, I grew up with an older sister who, uh, she's six foot tall, blue eyed, blonde. She was a runway model and I used to get all the hand me down. So I never knew how to dress, but now suddenly I'm dressing you. So that's funny. Yeah. But yeah. Any, it, any, it, anytime. It, you could also be known as the stylish vegan in addition to being the speed vegan, one of my favorite people. So thank you guys. I hope you come back tomorrow because we have a full day of programming. Take care, Elspeth. Bye-bye.